Hello and welcome back to Science with Mackenzie. And so today we are going to be talking about stars again and we are going to be talking about mass of stars and the difference between mass and size of stars. And then we are also going to be talking about um, how a supernova happens and what happens to the core of the star and the mass of the star when that happens. When we're thinking about stars and we're thinking about average or low mass or high mass stars, what we are saying is that the mass of the stars on the main sequence is the mass that the star has for its entire life. But what this means is that, let's say that this balloon was the gas cloud was the interstellar cloud that the star is going to form from. This has the mass. This is the matter. This is the gas particles that are going to make up the star. And so when we have the matter and the gravity starts to pull it all in and it starts um, heating up and we start getting nuclear fusion, our star will start to get bigger. As it gets bigger, its size is going to change. However, its overall mass is going to stay the same. So let's blow this balloon up. So let's pretend that this is the core of a star. And it's blown up. And as you can see, other than the space that is inside of the balloon itself, the overall mass of the balloon is the same. It didn't change in how much rubber was um, in the balloon. We can pretend that we have our star. So this is our star. So while this is our star, this is only part of our star. So this is the core of the star. So if we have the core of our star, we're only missing the gas cloud layers around it. What kind of gas are stars made out of? Well, most stars are made um, of mostly hydrogen and helium, and the first stars ever were only hydrogen and helium. The reason that we only find hydrogen and helium in early stars is because the other elements were not formed until we start having nuclear fusion. Because the mass inside the um, center of the molecular cloud, because there's so much gravity, um, the gravity is increasing the pressure which is increasing the temperature, and so it's actually going um, up to um, 4 million degrees Celsius inside the core. The inside of the star is so hot that it's not even a gas anymore. It's actually plasma. And so we are getting plasma phase um, of hydrogen in the star, and because of that, we are exciting the hydrogen atoms in a way where they are going to crash into each other and when the two hydrogen atoms crash into each other out spits out one helium atom so you get one helium atom and you get energy and that energy is in the form of light is happening in the core of the star and the light has to travel from the very middle of the core of the star all the way to the outside and so it can take a very long time for light to actually reach the outside of a star so inside a main sequence star we have nuclear fusion where we have hydrogen fusing into helium now when we start moving into the red giant phase what is happening is that the core, the core of the star is shrinking and it's heating up even more. 
And then the outer layers of the star um, that are gas, um, this is a lot of um, helium gas. And so normally inside the core, it doesn't get quite hot enough for the helium to start fusing. However, when the red giant, when its core starts heating up and the layers on the outside start expanding and cooling, what's happening is inside the core, we're starting to fuse helium. And so the helium is now a new energy source for these giant um, stars. Um, and then once the helium runs out, these stars are gonna cool and expand again. Um, when the helium fusion stops, it's going to um, fuse into, the helium will fuse into carbon. Um, and um, so there's different layers of elements that are going to be fused together. However, um, you can only, in a, like a star, you can only fuse up to iron. And you can't do that until you're a couple generations of stars in. And this is because when stars go supernova, which we're going to talk about later, they actually are releasing heavier elements that you normally wouldn't get because the energy is so intense. And so once you have these elements created and they are in space and the gas is in space and floating around, well, guess where stars form? They form from clouds in space. And so now that we have all this gas of heavier elements that we didn't have before from the supernovas, we can now um, use that to create new stars. And so newer generations of stars have more stuff in them already um, than older stars. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a model star for you guys. So we have our core, <clears throat> and so we know that inside the core we have nuclear fusion. If you take aluminum foil and you wrap it around... We have inside, we have the core of a star. Now, what is the layers of aluminum foil? What is that supposed to represent? Hmm. Well, if we have the core of our star, what is on the outside of the core of the star? Well, it's all the gas layers. So this is our hydrogen and helium layers. So we have the core of a star. And it has nuclear fusion, and the nuclear fusion is pushing out in all directions. If we pretend our hands are gravity, and we push down on the star, what's happening to the star? Is it resistance? So in this model, we're getting resistance because the air inside the balloon is pushing back on our hands think about this like the model, gravity tries to push inward on all sides of the star. The only thing that's keeping the core from collapsing is all of that nuclear fusion that is pushing out. So we're at the end of a star's life. The star is no longer going to fuse. So what's going to happen? When gravity comes along and pushes on our star when there's nothing inside keeping it together. So we are going to simulate this. I have here a push pin. It has a string on it. I think it was holding something up. We have our model star and the layers around it. And I am going to kill the nuclear fusion in the star. It's going to stop. No more nuclear fusion. And the foil is going to, it's the gas layers. However, at this point in the supernova, 
it's going to represent the mass of the star. So let's watch this. So we popped the core, and now if we bring our hands of gravity in from all sides, What just happened? Well, there was no more nuclear fusion creating pressure um, from the inside of the star. So gravity took over and it collapsed the core. And this collapsing of the core is usually an explosion um, called a supernova. Depending on the mass of the star initially, that is going to determine what the star is going to look like in its final days. This aluminum foil, what is left? This is as much as the core got squished down. And so let's pretend that um, it's still just the balloon in here. And so it's the same mass that it was when it was a cloud same mass when it was a main sequence star, same mass as a red giant star. This is the same mass. But Mackenzie, you say, it, it, it's smaller than it was. It's squished down, it got compacted. How is it the same mass? Well, you gotta remember, size and mass are completely different. Um, Mass is how much matter is in a place. Size is how much space matter takes up. This was the core of a star after a supernova. Then it would either be two things. It would either be a neutron star or if we could completely squish this down to the size of like a pin that would be like representing a black hole. And that's because neutron stars and black holes have the same mass as the initial star. It's just compressed down into a smaller space, smaller volume. This is why neutron stars and black holes have such high um, densities because there is so much matter in such a small volume. Black holes and neutron stars and white dwarfs and everything that is at the end of a star's life cycle is all the same mass as it was when it started. Using that logic, if you had something that was the mass of the sun, pretend this is the sun, pretend that this is the sun, and pretend that we replaced the sun with something like a black hole. However, let's pretend that these have the same mass. So this black hole has the same mass as our sun does on the main sequence. What would happen to our solar system? Well, this is a good question. Unlike the movies and the TV shows and all the books that you read and they talk about black holes and you know, like getting sucked into the black hole, like it's like a vacuum cleaner, um, like be careful, like you don't want to fly into it. Like if a black hole appears, we're, it's, we're all doomed. No, no, -uh. nope, that doesn't actually happen. That's not real, that's not true. In fact, black holes have the same gravity, what? The same gravity as the star that they were before. I know you're thinking right now, but, but that doesn't make sense. I thought that black holes had infinite gravity, so much gravity that not even light can escape. Well, they do once you go to a certain point near them. However, if you are a certain area outside of the black hole, 
its gravity is going to be just the same as it was before. It's going to be the same gravity um, based on mass, like it's the same thing. So that's why you have things that orbit black holes. Um, black holes, things can orbit around them, and that's why we think that there's supermassive black holes in the center of most galaxies, because we know that based on the movement of stars, that there's not enough mass in just like the stars and stuff themselves to have enough gravity to be able to control that much and have that many things like orbit. Why this is important? Well, if for some reason our sun was replaced with a black hole with the same mass, nothing would happen to the solar system. We would be A-OK. -okay. And that is because gravity and mass are directly related. The more mass something has, the more gravity it has. If the mass doesn't change, the gravity doesn't change. This is why if you replace something um, with a black hole of the same mass, nothing changes. One thing to remember, the sun will never turn into a black hole. It is not massive enough. Um, as we know, to turn into a black hole, you need to have 30 to 40 times the mass of the sun. And our sun, obviously, is only one mass of the sun, so it is not big enough to turn into a black hole when it dies. It is just going to turn into a red giant and expand into a nice, beautiful planetary nebula and then cool off into a little baby white dwarf. And then cool off some more and theoretically turn into a black dwarf. Um, kind of boring, but yeah. At least no black holes, so I hope um, this has been helpful um, and that I could help with explaining any of this stuff. Um, so yeah.